The way we live and work has drastically changed and is making way to this new wave of a free and independent work culture of remote work, which is becoming more and more accepted. The world of freelance entrepreneurs or digital nomads. There has been quite a bit of research into the emergence and culture of remote work, especially digital nomads in different parts of the world. But there has not been much on the emergence of these group of workers in Nigeria and how that influences regular 9 to 5 work. What is remote work or remote working and who is a digital nomad? Let's start with remote work. This is the practice of working from a location outside of a company's office. In some instances, it's a workforce strategy in which employees or workers split their time between on-site and remote locations to get their job done. In addition to employees, remote workers may also be vendors, agencies and independent contractors such as freelancers and they usually do their work from their homes, a coffee house or restaurant, or a co-working space. Digital nomads clearly engage in remote work and usually travel or move from location to location while getting their work done. Unlike traditional remote workers who could be employees and are affiliated to a company or business, digital nomads are freelancers mostly tech entrepreneurs or social media influencers. They are usually self-employed and work on contracted projects or project gigs online. In that sense, all digital nomads are remote workers, but not all remote workers are digital nomads, if that makes sense. Currently, 42% of African employees work remotely at least once a day a week. In Nigeria, remote working vacancies increased steadily between 2020 and 2021. Africa currently has a population of 1.37 billion, a figure projected to nearly double by 2050. It also has the world's largest and youngest workforce, with almost 60% of its population under the age of 25 and with over 250 million of its youth unemployed. Future employment is likely to depend to a great degree on digital technology. Added to that, globally, 75% of jobs will require advanced digital skills by the year 2030. Let's talk about core working spaces for a moment. Co-working spaces have become an integral part in consolidating the workflow of the freelance entrepreneur or the digital nomad. It involves renting space in a facility for a flexible period. The space is shared by other people coming from very different backgrounds. Entrepreneurs, artists, students, researchers. Regardless, they come there to work on their projects but are able to interact, everyone bringing their own talents or creative ideas. In trying to better understand the whole co-working culture, we paid a visit to the Bulb Africa, where we were given a guided tour on their co-working space facility. All right. What happens here, really? Uh, so the Bob Africa is a tech talent incubator strategically designed to close the skill gap um, in the job market. And we have different aspects of the Bob right now. While I take you around the facility, I will show you we have the desk at the Bob. We have a fellowship where we have course with trainings to train people in tech. Um, we have also, uh, we build also apps and products for companies. And Jerobat, you also get to meet um, the, the different communities we have right here at the ball. Fantastic. So you're going to show yes. all this to me. Fantastic. Okay. Let's go then. Okay, so 
Here currently we have quad five. They are having a training. Uh, we are teaching them. We're training them in tech. They are trying to learn skills in data analytics, cyber security, product design, DevOps, um, Java.NET, and the training is currently going on. They are having their bootcamp. Um, .NET bootcamp. We have a boardroom. This is a different cohort currently having their tech training. Hi, that is the facilitator taking them on data analytics. Uh, this is the boardroom. We also have little pods where people can sit down. You know, this is the Bob Africa. We have little pods where people sit, do their work. You know, people that are fellows, basically, that are part of the uh, community. Okay. Yes. Now this looks and then we have, very interesting. This, is, this happens to be my favorite spot in the office. It looks interesting. Yes. We have... Um, People, it has sockets where you just come in and sit and do your work. Okay. Yes, it's also um, like a co-working space too. Is this supposed to like give you the vibe? It gives you the vibe of home, yes. <laughs> the idea is to just create a homely vibe uh, whereby you feel relaxed and you know you get to do your job okay. properly. Yeah, you're not feeling so tense, you know, you get to, it's all about innovation, having new ideas. And we believe that, you know, creating spaces that make people comfortable can help them develop new ideas. Let's go upstairs to the oh. second floor. Okay. Welcome to awesome. the second floor. So here we have our co-working space. Um, this space is for people that want a dedicated desk. So we could have a company come here and say, oh, they want to like take the whole of the space for their staffs, their co-workers. Okay. Yeah. And they could do that like for a month, for yes. as long as they choose. Yes. So you could, it ranges for, you could take it for a day, you could take it for a month, but most of the time we like to encourage people taking it for like a particular duration of time. Yes. So uh, we could do it for a year, six months, three months. They take the whole space. It comes with different perks like access to the boardroom, oh. internet, um, you know, access to all the um, some of the other facilities. Facilities, yes. The, the kitchen. Facilities. We also have like our community events where we host for them, and they get to be a part of it. So they become a part of the community, okay. and then you know, play games. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's. We have some beds here, probably you're just feeling tired. Oh my goodness. And you need to like rest your what? head. <laughs> so if you're tired, you can come here, have a nap. Yes, have a nap. <laughs> and there are throw pillows, there's a TV. I watch TV while you're There's asking. also a kitchen here for the floor. All right. Um, a microwave really too, nice. to warm their food. Yeah. Wow. I will. Okay, we're back at the reception. Yes, welcome back <laughs> to the reception. Yes, the ball. So, so <laughs> this is this is your first port of call when you when you enter. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. So we have like this small cubicle here for people that want to have meetings. You know, probably you want to have a little meeting aside from your just just need a little bit of privacy. It's available. Yep. Uh, like I wow. Okay. Hello. 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 So there's like a little play area here for them. Um, they have their offices over there. Like a demarcation. You know, I told you earlier we can help demarcate if you needed your own, you know, space and all of that. Then there's a kitchen here too. This looks cozy. You know, each floor has a kitchen. Each floor has its own um, zone perks, basically. Yeah. And then I, I guess this is the favorite spot for second favorite. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this is so comfortable. <laughs> nice. Okay. So like, if you wanted to take a break, or exactly. You to just you know, it's take a tech space. We, we focus basically on comfort. You know, aside to working, we have to make sure that people we are creating a safe environment for people to feel comfortable, get new ideas, get. Uh, innovative things you know so basically we just have to create that environment that makes them feel like they're in a lounge yeah. <laughs> you know i love that yeah this, this is really be my nice. second favorite in the building yeah, your creative juices <laughs> <laughs> nice and then there are also offices here 
Yeah. So MCOPA happens to be a part of our community here at the pub. Yeah. So that's it. All. That's all. Typically, independent contractors, freelancers, entrepreneurs, and work-at-home professionals were tired to work in isolation and were looking for human interaction. They were also seeking an alternative to coffee shops and cafes, buying endless cups of tea to benefit from the free Wi-Fi. Co-working spaces became the perfect alternative. We met with DevOps freelance engineer Chizitello, who just got started on the freelance journey. In school, I studied chemical engineering, and you'll be surprised why am I now in tech when there's oil money. <laughs> ah. Okay, so yeah. you left the oil money for tech. Yes. Like, during, in school, there's this programming course we did, and I realized that I actually liked tech. Okay. So after school, I started doing tech. Um, after school, I enrolled in a tech school called All School Africa for it's a one year program and I started being a freelancer in tech. So as a because I finished last year on um, December so it hasn't been that long since I started being a freelancer. Um, there have obviously been challenges and ups and downs, especially as a newbie, because in my field as a DevOps engineer, most people want someone with 10 years of experience, yeah. 50 years of experience, yeah, and I don't have all that. So which is why being a freelancer is actually the best way for me to go in and then build my experience and my portfolio. So being a freelancer gives me that flexibility. Um, working in a traditional workspace, I don't have to come 9 to 5. So I can choose to wake up by 2 a.m. and do the work. The main thing is that I get the work done. I also have that um, independence, no one shouting down my neck. Yeah, just, just as long as I do the work and get the work done before the deadline, I'm okay. Then also, um, income potential. Right, so you, your income is not fixed, yeah. right? So you can, um, your income like increases or decreases based on the level of work you put in. Yeah. So this month you can be like, oh, I want to really put in the work, I want to really make a lot of money, and then you can make that amount of money. And next month you'll be like, I don't want to chill and relax and take care of my mental health. And although your income will be low, but at least you still have that flexibility and that for yourself. Are you here like on a daily basis or you come maybe once, twice no, a I week? No, I come three times a week. Okay, okay. So, and when you're not here, you're working from home? Yes. Okay, yes interesting. Yes. Okay, um, do your parents find that strange? Like, <laughs> yes. you know, because our parents, they can't wrap their head around, like, what is she in What doing exactly all is she day? doing? And you're earning, exactly. well, are you sure you're not doing fraud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that sort of thing. No, I first ventured into cloud because um, cloud is a subset of DevOps. DevOps is like more broad. Okay. So when I first told my parents I want to be a cloud engineer, they were like, what well, the exactly, what, what are you going to be doing? Are you going to work in with Google? Are you going to work in on storage? Yeah, and I have to like, sit them down and then explain that this is actually what I'm doing. Alright, but uh, I feel like they are now used to it. I think they are. I mean, as far as some small <laughs> coins are, are entering. entering you know, okay. um, you know, so for someone like you, you know, you, you describe yourself as a newbie per se. Let's just say someone who hasn't been doing this for all too long. What is um what is like an average income you know for someone who is just starting out as a freelancer you know like what for you could be an average income in a month let's say in a month okay an average income in a month for a freelancer i would say um like 150k that okay. as a in a month for you as, yeah, as, as a newbie yes yes 150,000 as a newbie that's that's a good answer. it could be more yes yeah, it could be more based on the budget. amount of work you put in okay. right so being a freelancer isn't all that it also has its demerits yeah um like isolation so um, sometimes you might just be working, if you're working in a traditional workspace, you meet new people, you have hangouts and all that, but working on your own, sometimes just bed your laptops, bed, laptop, bed, laptop, bed, laptop. Yeah, so you don't really have the chance to meet a lot of people and make new friends and things like that. Um, also, 
sometimes there might not be income inflow because it's not every time that you see yeah. work right so your income will be unstable so some months will be really nice or some months will be really down so you need to learn how to manage your income yeah. interesting <laughs> okay so how long have you been um like in a co-working space such as the bulb you know and and what has that done for you as opposed to just working at home you know like being in, in the house and having to work mm, i've been in the co-working space for roughly about four months and, and i like the fact that because we are in nigeria there's no constant light anywhere I tell you the fact that when I come here, I know there's a short light, there's internet. I also get to meet new people and just the fact that you're seeing different people's faces. And then some people also do what you actually do. So you could collaborate with them and then like pull up ideas and minds with them. We also got to talk with John, another tech freelancer who shared his experience as an engineer in the past five years. When it comes to the, the good sides of it, like you have freedom, right, to your income, you have, you are like, you are your boss. You are, you yourself, you are your boss and you know, you make decisions, right, you make decisions for yourself and, and you, you grow, right, by communicating also. So um, I'll just say it's because of the freedom and, um, more of the freedom. I'll just, I'll just point it to more of the freedom. Okay. And yeah, that's it. That, okay, what yeah. about some of the challenges? Are there, have there been some challenges? <laughs> if there were, okay. what would those so, be? Um, alongside the freedom, right, the money you earn by yourself this is like um, really huge sometimes. And you really appreciate yourself and um, thank yourself for starting out your career as a freelancer. But at the same time, there are a lot of challenges you might face. For example, as a beginner in the freelancing field, it's like, um, let me say, it's really hard to get your first gig. And that first gig is just like jubilating. <laughs> and yeah, but when you get the first gig, like it's one of the best moments of your, of your life. And um, <clears throat> one, one thing that people don't know, one of the mistakes I made when I first started out was that I didn't publicize myself. I didn't go out and talk about myself. I didn't sell myself. Okay. I, and that, that for one, cost me not to get my first job like, that fast. Right? Mm -hmm. So, but it got to a time I, I found out that um, connecting with people, communication really matters. And um, let me say, relationships matter. So, um, for you to be successful in this field, you need to learn how to communicate, you need to learn how to make friends and like um, bond with people and share your, sell yourself so well, right? And believe in yourself also. Then another one I was, I also faced was like, um, let me say overpricing. So when you start your career, you're very excited. There's so, there's so much enthusiasm in what you are ready to achieve, but, you don't just start with something like a very $10, big $10,000 uh, six figure <laughs> or seven figure amount you no know, it's little by little if you know the value you are given is more than that amount for example the value you are giving is probably about ten thousand dollars and um the value you are getting or the amount you're getting is five thousand dollars it's fine it's just to build your portfolio yeah. so um part of the thing all right is to build yourself as a a brand yeah. so why don't you rather stay at home or work from home uh, why would you rather be here and when and how did you discover this place and you decided okay. I think this is a conducive space for me to focus on the things that I'm doing I can't just see how much experience I've gained from the bulb how much people have have met and the whole facility the whole um, the ambience itself it's it's really it's really useful it's, it has helped me a lot in my career as an engineer and also the encouragement for so many people because of if you are good you are definitely good someone's there's always and funny thing is that you're good and someone's encouraging you you're going to be you're going to be awesome although a lot of progress has been achieved in recent years in how the remote work culture is being embraced there are still many challenges facing the market from reaching its full potential. Internet penetration is key. 
Internet subscriptions remain quite expensive in many parts of Africa, while internet speeds are often low. Let's talk power supply, or the lack of it, which is also a major constraint to remote work culture. At present, 46% of Africans still lack access to electricity. For example, while Nigeria is Africa's biggest oil producer, the West African nation still struggles to meet its energy needs, adding the fact that income levels and geographic location seem to be key determinants of electricity supply and use. There is a cultural stereotype that remote jobs are not stable, do not pay enough, and do not provide other benefits which come with the regular wage. All of these will have to be adequately addressed in order to make the necessary changes and to change the narrative. There also have to be more co-working spaces suited and tailored to the needs of remote workers. These could include adding daycare facilities for workers with children or young dependents, tailoring facilities to accommodate people living with disability, maybe pet-friendly co-working spaces, and a whole lot more. For now, one thing that has to start happening immediately is collection of more data from freelance workers and digital nomads in order to start analyzing trends in global hiring in emerging markets and to better understand the diverse demographics.